Recall our discussion about feasible portfolios in the video topic portfolio optimization. We noted that there is a range of portfolios that are called feasible portfolios that represent all the possible combinations of risk and return. In this video, we will compute one such feasible portfolio which is also an equal weighted portfolio. A feasible portfolio is an existing portfolio described by the setting of portfolio specification that is expected return and risk. Existing here means that the portfolio was specified as parameters in a manner that risk versus return plot of the portfolio has a solution and it is part of that feasible set including the efficient frontier. The generic way to define a feasible portfolio is to define the portfolio weights. For example, the equal weights portfolio is also one such a portfolio. So here we'll compute one such equal weight so here we'll compute one such equal weight feasible portfolio. For ease of plotting and computations, let us use our return object as we computed earlier and we'll multiply it with 100 to make it easy for plotting and other aesthetic purposes. Now, as a first step, I need to define equal weighted spec, EW spec object and initiate with our portfolio specification with portfolio spec function. So with this portfolio spec function, we have initiated the object, but we need to do a number of things starting with, let us design this an assets object, which will contain the number of assets that is n call final rib. So basically it will contain the number of assets that is seven in our case. You can check that by printing this. So there are seven assets. Now we need to specify the weight of each asset in the portfolio, which is equal. So we'll use this set weights command and we'll use our EW spec object and we'll assign equal weight. How to do that? Very easy. We can use this rep command. We can use this repeat or rep command where one upon n assets, n assets, that means one by seven in this case, and we'll repeat it seven times. So in a way, we are assigning equal weights to all the seven assets. Let's print this object and see if it is done actually. So let's print this EW spec and notice seven equal weights are created in this portfolio weight slot. Now we have created this EW spec object. We have initiated the portfolio specification object. We have also assigned equal weights to all the seven assets. And now we'll define our feasible portfolio. Let's name this object as equal weight portfolio. And using this feasible portfolio, feasible portfolio command, we'll use our final return data here. And we'll specify the specification object, which is EW spec. We also need to specify the constraints as we have done earlier. We will use long only constraints, long only. Most of the times you rely on long portfolios. Generally short positions are not very desirable. So in order to define this equal weighted feasible portfolio, we'll use long only constraints. Now let's print this object. Let's see what we have created here. So let's print this. We can simply run this and print and see the values that we have. So it's the estimator, the solver, minimum risk, long only object. You can see the weights, all the weights are equal here. Also the covariance risk budgets are computed, the target returns and risk covariance are often called here standard deviation also or and CVAR and VAR are presented. Notice here covariance risk for the portfolio in this particular functional terminology is same as the standard deviation of the portfolio. So the standard deviation or variance of the portfolio is measured or represented by this COV covariance object. 
CVAR risk, VAR risks are computed along with the mean return of the portfolio. Now let us print this equal weighted object and first we will define an interesting color palette. In R, there are a lot of interesting commands to create color. So we will use this div palette command in a portfolio. And here we need to specify the number of colors to be generated, which we will generate using n call final return, which is seven assets. So we will generate seven colors. With this command, we will specify that seven colors are needed. And we will specify that the palette has to be in the red blue format. So this is the symbol red blue, which tells R that a red blue palette color combination is to be created. Now we have the colors. Also, we'll specify three windows. So using this par mfro equal to c one comma three, we'll specify that three objects will be printed now. And these three objects, first we'll specify the weights pi object, the proportion of individual asset weights in the portfolio. Weights pi. In the weight pi object, we'll specify our portfolio object, which is EW portfolio. Also, we'll specify the radius. Let's take a radius of 0 0.7. Based on my past experience of coding these kind of figures, I find this 0 0.7 to be useful. I specify the color as call coal. I specify the color as coal, which we have created. Also, some headings are needed here. So mtext command text. And the text is equally weighted minimum variance portfolio side equal to 3 line 2.5 these are some of the parameters font equal to 2 6 equal to 0 0.7 adjustment equal to 0 so this is first object So let's see if we have correctly created. Yes, so this is correctly created. At the end of it, I'll format it properly. But before that, we'll create these objects. Next object is weighted returns pi. So weighted returns pi. So we'll use this weighted returns pi function. I'll specify the portfolio spec, which is EW portfolio. Again, the same set of objects, radius equal to 0 0.7. Call is call again i'll use the same m text heading as earlier i'll just copy paste lastly i'll also specify the covariance risk budgets we'll explain these things in detail shortly here also i'll use specify the same parameters that is the portfolio, equal weighted portfolio, the radius and color remains the same. And now I'll again give the heading M text. Now let me plot them in one go. First, I'll specify the color object which call and then par telling r that three plots are to be created first weight pi name it then returns weighted returns name the covariance risk object and name it let me zoom the plot and explain it in detail so as you notice the first plot is equally weighted and minimum variance portfolio since it is equally weighted portfolio notice all the weights are 14.3 percent for all the securities the next weight is weighted returns which indicates the contribution to overall returns by individual assets as we can see here the color coding represents the contribution to return by individual objects clearly the last one is covariance risk budget which indicates the contribution of individual securities to overall risk of the portfolio as we can see here for example nifty has 8.8 percent .8 contributions s p 500 has 12.8 percent and this will sum up to 100 percent so they are, these are contribution to the risk of the portfolio by individual securities. To summarize, in this video, we created a feasible portfolio with equal weight specification. Subsequently, we visualize the portfolio with the respective weights of the individual assets. 
their contribution to returns in the form of weighted returns and their contribution to the overall risk of the portfolio through covariance risk budget plot. In the previous video, we computed a feasible equal weighted asset portfolio. In this video, we will try to compute minimum variance portfolio and we will try to visualize various aspects of this portfolio. Now, for a minimum variance portfolio, for every return, there is one portfolio which has the minimum variance or minimum risk. And therefore, in this particular portfolio, we will try to initiate this mini risk. Let's call it mini or min risk spec. And we'll initiate this with portfolio spec object through our portfolio spec function. Like we noted earlier, we need to specify a particular return for which we'll compute the minimum variance portfolio. So let's set the target return equal to, let's set the target return of this min risk spec as mean of final return. So the mean of all the securities will be considered as the target return for which we'll compute the minimum risk portfolio. Now that we have assigned target return, let's specify this minimum risk portfolio object. Let's call it min risk portfolio. And for this min risk portfolio, a very simple command is to use is efficient portfolio because this will be part of our efficient frontier. And we need to specify the data. Like we noted earlier, once the target return is specified, other parameters that is weight and risk are automatically computed as part of the efficient portfolio. That means we have identified a particular portfolio on the efficient frontier once we specify either the risk or return. So this is our data final return object. We need to specify that specifications are min risk. So min risk spec. And lastly, since we are working with long only constraints, we'll specify the constraints as long only. So with this, we'll start with our min risk portfolio object. In fact, we can very well print this min risk object like this. We can see the printed object. It has portfolio weights are given, the resulting portfolio weights. We can see the only three assets have been used, Nifty, FTSE and SNP. The covariance risk budgets are also provided along with target returns and the risk covariance or variance risk, CVAR, VAR. Now, let's do a little bit of visualization as we did earlier. So I'll not write the command again. I'll simply just copy paste the commands. Although this time, this time around, we'll use a different color palette. Let's call this color palette while visualizing instead of div palette, we'll use quality palette. And here the color specified is, let's use dark tooth theme. So with this theme and also this is not the feasible portfolio, but min risk portfolio. So we need to specify that this is not equal weight portfolio. This is min risk portfolio that we are using. And this we need to highlight in the heading also. So minimum risk MB portfolio. So this is minimal risk MB portfolio. This is minimum risk MB portfolio. So we'll specify likewise. This is a minimal risk portfolio. Instead of equal weight specification, this is a minimum risk. So now let us run the visualization. So again, we'll specify the color. Three windows to be plotted. First, second, and third. Now, because in this case, as a part of efficient frontier, only three assets were utilized. So let's have a look at this diagram. As we can see here, you have Nifty, SNP, and FTSE, and their corresponding weights are provided 41%, 35.5, and 23%. We can also notice the minimal risk portfolio weighted returns, the contribution of two returns from all these three assets, Nifty, SNP, FTSE, and we can also see their covariance risk budgets as a part of visualization exercise. So, in this video, we created an efficient portfolio 
the target return was mean return of all the seven assets the mean returns as target and corresponding portfolio with minimum risk which is corresponding to this given return obviously that portfolio will lie on the efficient frontier that portfolio has been identified with long only constraints so no short constraints only long positions are considered and then we subsequently visualize the portfolio its three properties first the weights of individual assets we found that only three assets have been utilized to create this portfolio we also visualize the weighted returns and the covariance risk budgets in the previous video we computed minimum risk portfolio while for every portfolio with a given expected return or a target expected return one efficient portfolio with the minimum risk can be identified on efficient frontier however there is one particular portfolio for which the risk is minimum across the entire efficient frontier and this is called global minimum variance portfolio in this video we will try to identify this global minimum variance portfolio let's name it global min spec global min spec and this is portfolio spec let's name it global min min spec specification let's initialize this as we have been doing in the previous videos now for this portfolio let's start with global let's call it global min portfolio and let's initialize it with the command the command that is used is called minimum variance portfolio now here let's specify the data which is final return we also need to provide the spec which is glow min spec next we need to provide the constraints and as we did earlier we will use the long only constraints long only so we'll initiate our portfolio object which is global minimum variance portfolio let's print this so for this portfolio as we can see in the printed object this portfolio employs nifty snp and ftse we can see the respective contribution of these assets to the portfolio risk in the covariance risk budgets 40% contribution to risk by nifty 27.9 by ftse and 32.2% risk contribution by snp we can also see the mean value of the return risk measure that is covariance risk of the portfolio essentially which is the variance of this portfolio c var and var so three risk measures in this terminology this covariance is same as the variance of the portfolio along with the c var and var now let's visualize this and again we'll use the same set of commands for visualization so i'm just copy pasting them from previous video and here we need to just change a few parameters so this is global min portfolio so instead of this min risk portfolio object will replace it with the global min portfolio also in the nomenclature the heading we'll call it global min instead of minimum risk we'll call it global minimum variance mb portfolio so we'll call it global minimum variance mb portfolio and we'll define a slightly interesting another color palette let's this is called sequi palette sequi palette and here again we'll define a new color scheme yellow green so we'll use this ylgn ylgn for yellow green and let's run it i'll enlarge my plotting window a little bit so that graphs are clean global minimum variance and all the three plots are here let's visualize them a little bit so we have global minimum variance mb portfolio we can see nifty 40% snp 32 as we already saw and this is in the form of pie chart we also have weighted returns so that is contribution to overall returns from each asset which is nifty 1.3 snp 1.4 and ftse 0.2 lastly we have contribution to the portfolio risk so around 40% from nifty 
32% from S&P and 27% from FTSE. So this is the risk contribution. To summarize this video, we created a global minimum variance portfolio object with long constraints. Then we visualize the portfolio. We visualize in pie chart format. We visualize the weights of different assets. We found that only three assets are employed out of the given seven assets in the minimum risk variance, global minimum risk or global minimum variance portfolio. We also computed the weighted returns plot indicating the contribution to overall returns from different assets. Again, the three assets were employed. And then we also saw the covariance risk budget pie plots where we saw the contribution of individual assets to overall portfolio risk. Recall our discussion on video topic portfolio optimization. We noted that in the presence of risk free lending and borrowing, there is one particular portfolio that is best among all. And that portfolio was identified through a tangent line from risk free rate to the efficient frontier. So in this video, we'll try to plot, visualize and construct that tangency portfolio or the best portfolio across all the portfolios. Let's call it and initialize this portfolio with TG spec. As we have done in the previous videos, we'll initially initiate the object with portfolio spec, portfolio spec function. The object is initiated. However, this object will need risk free rate. So we'll set the risk free rate for this TG spec object. Let's have a 0% rate. So we'll assign it a zero value. One can assign depending upon the market and securities. One can assign a suitable and appropriate value. Now let's call this portfolio a TG portfolio, tangency portfolio. And we need the function tangency portfolio to create this object. The data employed is again final rate, which contains the seven security returns that we have selected earlier. We need to provide the specifications which we have initiated the object TG spec object that we have initiated earlier. Again, we are using long only constraints. Later on, we'll also employ short constraints, but for now we are using long only constraints. So long only. And this is our portfolio. Now let's print this portfolio object. Let's see what are the co contents. So for this portfolio, we have the portfolio weights. Notice only two assets are employed here. It seems these two assets, the combination of these two assets provide the best among all, Nifty, S&P. Their risk budgets, 27% and 72% for Nifty and S&P respectively. Their mean, the risk of the portfolio, covariance, CVAR and VAR risks are provided. Let's try to visualize this portfolio as we have been doing. And again, we'll copy paste the same visualization command. Now, we'll use another palette. Let's blue purple kind of palette with sequential. We'll use this blue purple, BU, PU, blue purple. And again, this, this is TG portfolio object. So we'll change the name from global minimum portfolio to TG portfolio, which is our tangency portfolio. The best efficient portfolio identified through tangent line from risk free rate to this okay so i need to copy paste it properly tg portfolio instead of global minimum portfolio also the name has to be changed so i have written global minimum variance mb so i'll call it tangency tangency mb portfolio So this is the best efficient portfolio. We'll visualize it. So I have created a color scheme. Let me plot this and let us zoom and visualize the object properly. So in this object, only two assets are employed as NP and Nifty. And as we saw, 35% contribution, 35% weight for Nifty and 65% for recent weighted returns. The contribution to return 1.1% from Nifty and 2.9% from S&P. Also, let's look at the contribution to risk, the covariance risk budgets, which indicate the contribution to risk. So Nifty has 27.9%, while S&P has 72% contribution to risk, which also reflects the higher weight assigned to S&P. To summarize, in this video, we 
computed the tangency portfolio with a risk-free rate of 0% and long only constraints. We also tried to visualize the portfolio. We visualized the respective weights. We found that only two assets, Nifty and S&P 500 were utilized in construction of this portfolio with weights of 35% and 65%. We also found the weighted returns, the contribution to returns from these two assets in this portfolio, tangency portfolio. And we also computed the contribution to the overall risk from Nifty and S&P to this tangency portfolio, which works around 27.9% contribution from Nifty and 72.1% contribution from S&P, as we can see in the charts. In this video, we'll learn how to interactively plot mean variance frontiers. So we'll interactively plot mean variance portfolio frontiers. As a starting point, let's initiate our mean variance portfolio object. Let's name it MVP spec. And as we have been doing, we'll use this portfolio spec function to initiate this object. Next, we need to specify the number of frontier points. These frontier points will be used to specify how many frontier points are required. And we'll use this MB spec object, MBP spec object. And we'll assign 100 frontier points. Now, finally, we'll create our frontier objects because we are using long only constraint we'll name it long frontier let's name it long frontier and we'll use portfolio frontier function first we'll specify our data object which is final underscore return and we need to provide our minimum variance portfolio spec now that we have created this long frontier object let's print it and see what is inside this object so we can see that it has basic portfolio slot with estimator solver optimization long only constraint and notice out of there are total 100 points out of those 100 will be giving us five points to as a brief summary so notice portfolio weights point number one 25 50 so we have every 25 interval we have the details of weights we have covariance risk budgets for each of these 100 points but here for presentation purposes only five points are printed we also have target their target returns and various risk covariance cvar var risk printed for five points out of 100 so let's start so let me enlarge the plotting window and we wanted to plot it interactively so we'll plot this long frontier object let's plot it and once i click control enter and i press control enter eight options are provided so in the first option it will plot the frontier object notice the frontier object is created then we'll add the minimum risk portfolio with selection 2 that red point is the minimum risk portfolio it is added here with number 3 we'll add this tangency line so this is the tangency line and this is tangency portfolio also with point number 4 we'll specify the risk return of individual assets so all the seven assets are there printed so here we can see individual assets being printed with no next selection we'll add equal weights portfolio with selection 5 we'll add equal weight portfolio this is the square solid blue point here which is the equal weighted portfolio with number selection 6 we'll add two frontiers two asset frontiers combination or basically combination of two assets large number of two asset combinations as they are being created we can see that line by line a number of two asset combinations are created next with point number seven we'll add monte carlo simulated portfolios these dots represents a number of simulated dot monte carlo portfolios with different combinations of weights and so on and so forth you can see these small small dots representing monte carlo simulated portfolios lastly we'll add sharpe ratio of monte carlo so with point number eight we'll add the sharpe ratio line so notice this dotted line here sharpe ratio for markovitz portfolio only so this is harry markovitz portfolio sharpe ratio to summarize in this video we in created interactive portfolio of efficient frontier and feasible region plot in this plot we started with plotting the efficient frontier then we added minimum risk portfolio then tangency portfolio then we added risk return of single assets 
then we added equal weighted portfolio then we combined all possible two asset combinations to create two asset frontiers and then we added monte carlo portfolios simulated portfolios in this particular video we are working with long only configuration so none of the assets are put in short position in this video we'll again create the long frontier plot but in a more customized manner so we'll again create the portfolio frontier but in a more interactive and customized manner so let's see so we'll start with our frontier plot object and here we'll use our long frontier object that we created in the previous video we'll specify the type we'll specify the type as line and we'll add line width as 4 which will result in a very solid line in our portfolio so we'll run this command and a very large efficient plot appears then we'll add the you can say cml point or tangency point again we'll specify the long frontier object we'll provide color as red and we'll add pch 19 kind of figure for plotting and line width of 3 lwd of 3 so notice this solid red circle has appeared as the tangency point cml point or you can call it tangency point or this portfolio then i would like to plot equal weight points points with equal weight portfolio so equal weight points again same objects are supplied only that will change color to probably brown and maybe pch as 20 this time to change it a little bit so this brown circle is supply, supplied here we can see that this is our equal weighted points point representing equal weighted portfolio there are certain combinations next i also wanted to plot single assets individually so i'll supply single asset points so i want to identify single asset point to points as well so i'll provide long frontier pch as specified at 20 but this time around i want to plot multiple colors so i'll use color equal to 1 to 7 so seven different colors will be employed and six equal to 3 indicates large circle so let me start plotting from here so when i add this notice a number of colors appear so these are my seven assets i also wanted to draw two asset lines as we did earlier with interactive plot here we'll do it in more customized manner so two asset lines uh, but this time i'll supply specific colors so probably i'll specify color equal to blue let me see so here color equal to blue so i'll run this two asset line command two asset lines and i'll supply my long frontier object long frontier object let's see if so these lines are created you can see the lines being created let's see if we can specify the color also so let me give a color of maybe blue i'll empty this chart so i'll again recreate these okay so blue color lines are being created as we can see in fact here if you want you can increase the line with slightly large so that in the width of the line can be increased lwd can be specified as 2 so you can see now again the lines are redrawn with a solid larger width also you can add monte carlo portfolios monte or first let's try with sharpe ratio lines so if we can plot sharpe ratio lines with again the long frontier but this time i'll provide color as red for sharpe ratio line color is red line width again will keep two so you can see a very solid line which is sort of going from here is plotted now let's add monte carlo portfolios also so i'll add monte carlo portfolios monte carlo points each point represent a put combination of securities for a given risk and return so i'll use long frontier let's use pch of 20 and i'll use maybe color green let's use green color it seems less green so we'll use green colors 
to present my Monte Carlo points and you can see these filling the our feasible region filled with Monte Carlo points. So to summarize this video, we created a customized frontier plot where we started with the frontier plot using our long frontier object created in the previous video. Then we added the tangency point with CML points command. Then with equal weighted points command, we provided the portfolio with equal weights in all the seven assets. Then we identified the single asset, seven single asset points. There are seven assets in this portfolio that uh, we are using, seven securities we are, we are using. So with this single asset points command, we identified all the points in this region. Then we also created two asset line as a combination of two portfolios. Then we added Sharpe ratio line and then lastly we added Monte Carlo points. In this video, we will examine the properties of our frontier point plots. More specifically, we examine the efficient frontier points and their weights, the weighted return of individual assets and covariance risk budgets. So here we will identify the properties of frontier points frontier points now initially we started with the object with 100 frontier points however it would be slightly difficult to visualize 100 points in one graph so rather what we'll do is we'll set n frontier points but instead of using very large number of points we'll restrict ourselves to maybe 25 points and re recall the name of the object in the previous video it was mvp spec so we'll use the same mvp spec object and we'll specify that we want to use only 25 points instead of 100 so now the specification is changed so we'll again modify our long frontier object which we have already created but we need to modify it with the new frontier point values so we'll specify our return object final return which contains the security returns or individual asset returns basically all the seven assets their returns and then we'll supply our modified spec object so long frontier object is created now with this object we'll do first we'll do the weights plot so we need to use this weights weights plot command and we need to supply our long frontier object long frontier object let's run this so notice in this weights plot command we have weights and on the x-axis we have target return on the top of it we have target risk and we have unique combination so there are 25 points or portfolios for each portfolio we have target risk and target return printed here and their weight out of the total 100 percent or this one represents 100 percent and there's zero so their weights so notice that the first portfolio with a return of 0 0.00581 here we have completely it's completely it seems dax and then as we move ahead the proportion of this DAX security goes down and in between we have S&P and Nifty security and last one is seems to be Russell last one is Russell so how the portfolio weight changes can be easily visualized and also we can see the how the movement of risk takes place so return here we can see return increases and also the risk increases we can see that for all these 25 frontier points that we have specified next we can also plot the weight weighted return plot so for that we need to add weighted return weighted returns plot and again we'll use our we'll supply this long frontier object to this window and we can see weighted returns that means contribution to overall return by each asset is provided again on bottom and top we have target return target risk and we can see initially we have this dax object and as we move ahead in between we have this nifty and snp objects increasing share of in the return as we can see on the weighted return axis and last one is russell finally we also plot our covariance risk budget plot in the covariance risk budget plot we need to provide again we need to provide our long frontier object and we can see the overall covariance risk budget 100 percent that is one in the first portfolio as we expected we have the dax object completely and its return and risk and as we move ahead the risk contribution as we decrease the weight of DAX the risk contribution also decreases in between we have nifty and SNP significantly contributing to portfolio risk because we are significantly investing in these portfolios or assets lastly in the last portfolio we have Russell 2000 only to summarize in this video we visualized our 
portfolio object with 25 frontier points. We visualize the weights for each of these 25 frontier point portfolios, the weights of individual assets for all the se uh, seven assets. We noted that mostly it is DAX, Nifty, S&P and in one portfolio Russell contributing. We also noted the weighted returns plot. We visualize the weighted return plot. And lastly, we saw the contribution to the risk of overall risk to individual assets through covariance risk budget plot. In fact, if you like, you can visualize them in one window only. For example, you can use this par m fro equal to c 3 comma 1 and let's in, enlarge our plot window. Let's see. So this entire plot can be visualized in one window itself using par m fro and nicely visualized. We can see the movement of weights, weighted returns and covariance risk in a single window with each other. In this video, we will initiate a short portfolio object and visualize it. So as a starting point, let us initiate our short portfolio object. Let us call it short. We will initiate and visualize a short portfolio object. So as a first point, let us start with this short spec object. Again, we will use our portfolio spec command to initiate the object. Once the object is initiated, let us assign some frontier points. So, first we will assign using this asset and frontier points command as we did earlier. We will simply put short spec and we will assign, we will start with 100 points first. and now that we have signed 100 points. Also, please remember when you are working with short objects where minus infinity to plus infinity all options are on table, you need to change the solver also. So, we will set using this set solver command. If you print this short spec object, notice the current solver configuration is solve quad programming. Now, we need to change it and using this set solver, we will use short, we will change it to short sol solver we will supply our short spec short spec object short spec object and we'll supply the solver name which is sol which is solver short exact so this is our solver object, solver short exact. Now that we have identified the solver, we will start with our portfolio object, which is short, let's name it short frontier. And again, we'll use our portfolio frontier, portfolio frontier function. We'll provide the return object data, data which is final return, which contains the return of seven securities that we are using then spec which is short spec object that we started and lastly we can now provide constraints as short so we'll run this now short frontier object is created in fact you can print it to see what are inside so we can see now uh, the portfolio weights we can see some of the weights are negative out of 100 five points are printed as we have seen in the previous video notice this solver solver short exact and you can see some of the portfolios have negative in fact in covariance risk budgets also we can see some negative and target we can see the target returns covariance cvar and bar risk calculated now using a very interesting command which is called tailored frontier plot we'll try to visualize this short object so we'll use this what is we call tailored frontier plot which nicely prints a graph or plot of short frontier so we'll use the short frontier object that we created uh, let's give it a heading m text which is mv portfolio with short constraints short constraints again we'll stick to the covariance risk risk equal to cov now let's enlarge the plotting window so that graphs turns out nicely and we can see here 
let's examine the graph so we have a nicely printed frontier along with the tangency line and we have also individual assets plotted here along with the Sharpe ratio line so this is the complete graph through tailored plot commands we can also use plotting commands that we use earlier to visualize this in addition we would also like to have those weighted weighted returns weights and covariance risk budget plots so for that i'll again use the same com same set of commands copy paste them but i'll just change this long frontier to short frontier so i'll just change it to long front frontier to short frontier and let us plot them i'll use this par m pro 3 1 so that all of them are there in the single plot so let me zoom it to visually examine it more carefully so let us examine this graph more carefully in the first plot we have weights of individual assets and now we can see it varies from 0 0.0058 to 0 0.0451 we can also see how the weights are changing now see it is negative minus one we can also see some of the points below minus one and some of them above two which indicates that some of assets has been shorted and the additional wealth due to shorting is invested in other assets so we can see that in fact it seems that russell has been russell uh, has been shorted maybe a little bit of ftsc also and on the long side we have may probably footsie ftsc and tags on the long side and the pattern moves gradually on the weighted return plot also we can see the contribution in fact we can see some of the assets contributing negatively particularly the russell and along with russell maybe it seems cac some of them are contributing negatively to the returns along with we can also see along with that target risk and target return in the last plot we have covariance risk budgets and again here also some of them are contributing negatively due to their short positions while more specifically the FTSE and DAX are con sorry CAC and DAX are contributing FTSE and DAX are contributing positively so they are in the long position initially and the position varies over time to summarize this video we initiated with a object so short object with 100 frontier points first we plotted these frontier points along with their frontier then tangency line and individual asset points through tailored frontier plot command here we plotted them and then also we visualize their weights weighted returns and covariance risk budget plots for this short portfolio object in the series of next four videos we construct and visualize box group and covariance budget constraint portfolios and in the final fourth video we will create a complex portfolio object with all four constraints put together so first we'll start with the box constrained portfolio frontier please note when you put constraints in the frontier the frontier is slightly restricted not as free as the frontier printed earlier which means that some of the combinations of risk return portfolios may not be available so let's start with this box spec box let's call it box spec and we'll again initiate with the portfolio spec object let's have it for set n frontier points let's start with 25 points we'll start with so we'll have this box spec object with 25 points and let's specify the box constraints so let's have c first constraint may be minimum weight for portfolio 1 to 7 for let's put it on all the seven portfolios equal to 0 0.01 as minimum constraint and let's also put the maximum weight constraint for all the 1 to 7 portfolios equal to 0 0.5 so this is our these are our box constraints now let's create this box frontier object and this requires this portfolio frontier function where we'll specify the data as final underscore rate and we also need to provide the specification of this which we have put as box spec box spec and then constraints 
so now that we have specified box constraint we can directly put our box constraints object so we have box print here now as a starting point to visualize this or you can directly print this also so you can just print this simply and you'll find all the constraint we have already discussed in the constraint video topic on constraints five points are printed you can see that their target risk returns are also computed covariance risk budgets and portfolio weights are computed you can see the constraint minimum weight and maximum weight these are box constraints on individual assets so let's use this tailored frontier plot and let's specify the object our object is box frontier heading is mean variance portfolio with box cons constraints and again our risk is covariance risk so let's plot this so we need to enlarge the window a little bit and you can see the plots nicely printed plot return on the x y axis risk on the x axis covariance risk you have the frontier points 25 points along with individual assets and tangent line sharp ratio line nicely plotted here so this is your visualization also you can we can also plot the weights weighted plots and other plots that we discussed earlier that is quite easy so you simply need to use the same commands here we'll just copy paste in the interest of time i'll not rewrite them and i just need to change this short frontier here from box frontier because this is our box constrained object box frontier so i'll just put box frontier here and again they will be plotted i'll i'll just enlarge the plotting window a little bit and then i'll run them so you can see that all the three plots weights weighted returns and covariance risk budgets are plotted the interpretation remains same as in the previous series of videos where we discussed the interpretation with target return target risk weight contribution of individual assets weighted return return contribution of individual assets how they are contributing to overall return and how individual assets are contributing to the overall covariance risk of the portfolio or sort of risk of the portfolio which is measured through standard deviation or variance in the next video we'll plot the group frontier or group constraint frontier to summarize this video we created a box constraint frontier object and visualize it in the next video we'll create a group constraint frontier object in this video we'll construct and visualize group constraint object or portfolio so first let us initiate with the group spec and again as we do every time portfolio spec function to initiate the group spec object again i'll use the same 25 points here we'll just change the group spec notice i'm changing box spec to group spec here so basically this with this will assign 25 frontier points to group spec now we'll create this group constraints and we'll assign the group constraints the following constraints are employed first we'll use minimum sum minimum sum weight that means for assets let's say one two four I am putting a constraint of sum equal to 0. Point, let's say maybe 0. 0.05. So sum should not be less than 0. 0.05. Minimum sum of assets 1 to 4, that means 1, 2, 3, 4. And let me also put a group constraint of max sum w, maximum weight, maximum sum. I am restricting for asset, let's say 4 to 7 to 0 0.8 so i'm restricting the maximum sum and minimum sum for 1 to 4 and 4 to 7 so these are my constraints now let me define the group frontier nicely so group frontier and let me assign it through portfolio frontier function as we have already done portfolio frontier function i need to specify the data which is final underscore return then i need to specify the spec which we have created with group spec group spec object and lastly i need to specify the 
constraints constraints equal to group constraints now i'll run this command so my group frontier is created you can print it to see the elements inside for example you will find basic portfolio slot with covariance estimator solver optimization function you have nicely printed objects the target return risk and so on so let's visualize them so i'll use again the tailored frontier plot as we used earlier so tailored frontier plot for this we need to provide the object which is group frontier object and then we need to provide the heading temp text equal to mv portfolio with group constraints and we'll specify the risk as covariance let us let us run this tailored frontier plot and as we can see the tailored frontier plot here nicely printed please notice some of the risk written combinations or portfolios may not be available here because of these group constraints as they were in the original plot now we can also add those weighted plots i will simply copy paste these commands i will not rewrite in the interest of time and please notice i'll just change the box frontier to group frontier and i'll put it here i'll just change the box frontier to group frontier here as we can see it is being done and then i can print it notice all the three weights beta return and covariance risk budget plots are plotted here the interpretation remains the same we can interpret them in our free time to summarize this video we started with our group spec object with portfolio spec function we initiated the object and specified 25 frontier points then we provided the group constraints as we can see here with these group constraints we created our portfolio frontier object with group constraints which we visualize with the help of tailored frontier plot and then we visualize three plots weight plot weighted return plot and covariance risk budget plots in the next video we'll create a covariance risk budget constraint object and visualize it in this video we'll construct a budget constraint portfolio frontier so let's initiate this budget spec budget spec and again we'll use our portfolio spec object again we'll set our frontier points to 25 but let's use this budget spec object here replace this with group spec so we have budget spec and then let's specify these budget constraints so let's start with identifying these budget constraints constraint number one let's call it budget dot one and we we'll specify minimum for one to n assets there are seven assets so this n assets means seven and we'll put it to three minus infinite so this is minus infinite so we are putting no restriction on the downside and let's put object number two maximum budget maximum budget constraint let's put for one to n n assets again seven assets we'll have a sequence from 0 0.4 to 1 and we'll split it by 0 0.1 so these are two constraints that we are going to use and let's define this object as budget let's specify this as budget constraints and we can assign this with both the conditions c budget dot one and budget dot two you can execute this in fact we can print these this combined budget constraints we can print them we can see here now let's create our frontier plot so for that let's specify our budget budget frontier object 
for this we need that portfolio frontier function so let's specify the data as final return final return data then spec as we have already specified our budget budget spec object then we need to specify the constraints equal to budget constraints let's run this so we have budget frontier now we'll use the our tailored plot frontier command here in fact we can copy paste the same set of commands and we just need to replace this budget frontier let's replace this budget frontier and we'll call it minimum variance portfolio with budget risk budget constraints risk budget constraints so let's plot this this is our risk budget fronting frontier and again please notice a number of points may be not available here which were there in the original plot because now we are putting this budget constraint so some of the risk return combinations may not be available with this budget frontier similarly we can also plot the weights plot that we did earlier we can plot this notice with different combination of weights weighted returns and covariance risk budgets interpretation remains same only that this time around we are putting certain conditions as we can see here so to summarize this video here we initiated a budget specification object with 25 frontier points and we specified certain budget constraints as we can see in these lines we have specified for all the seven assets certain conditions on their minimum and maximum risk budgets then we visualize this risk budget object here we visualize this through taylor frontier plot command and then we also plotted the weight weighted return and covariance risk budget plots and we noted that there were some risk return combinations may not be available because we have put certain budget constraints that means in terms of maximum and minimum risk where it can possibly attain for individual securities in the next video we'll create a complex budget object using all these three box group and covariance risk budget constraints and then construct and visualize the portfolio object in this video we'll construct a complex constraint object we'll employ the group box and budget constraint objects that we developed in the previous videos we'll combine them and create a complex budget object and construct a portfolio around it and visualize it so we'll create a complex constraint object let's create that so for that let's call it complex spec let's call it complex spec and again we'll use our portfolio spec function to create this object we'll as we did earlier we'll specify the 25 frontier points but we'll need to change the object to complex spec object here so we'll do that and now we'll create our complex complex constraints and we'll assign our box box constraints group constraints and budget constraints so this is our complex constraint object now the remaining commands will remain same we need to create a frontier box constraint frontier so we'll let's call it box frontier sorry complex frontier so we'll call it complex frontier and here instead of normal constraints and specs we need to specify the complex spec object let's call it we'll use our complex we'll use our spec as complex spec object and constraint as let me enlarge the plot window a little bit complex constraints object so this will be our complex frontier and now while plotting we'll use this complex frontier object to 
create the plot we'll call it mb portfolio with complex const constraint complex constraints let's plot this a little we we'll need to enlarge it a little bit so this is our complex constraint plot as we can see here so let me plot our complex frontier this is our complex frontier Similarly, using this complex frontier object, I can also plot the weight plots, the weighted return plots, and the covariance risk budget plot. So, let me do that as we did earlier. So, this is our complex constraint object. We have weights, weighted returns, covariance risk budgets. Interpretation remains identical as we did earlier. To summarize, in this video, we initiated a complex specification object wherein again with 25 frontier points and we combine all the three constraints that is box group and budget constraints combining these we created a complex constraint object and we started with the complex frontier and we visualized the complex frontier with our tailored frontier plot as we can see here this was our tailored frontier plot subsequently we plotted the weight weighted returns and coincis budget plot for this complex constraint plot in this video, we'll discuss how to initiate a CVAR, conditional VAR or expected shortfall specification portfolio. In the interest of time, we'll only discuss initiation of portfolio. The other functions for generating tangency portfolio, minimum risk portfolio, global minimum risk, equal weighted portfolio and also creation of Shin Frontier will remain same. So, we'll, in the interest of time, we'll not cover that. They can be replicated simply using the functions that we have discussed already in this lesson. So we'll just initiate mean C bar portfolio. So earlier we were using standard deviation variance or what we called here as covariance risk earlier. We'll replace that with C bar conditional bar risk. So to initiate that object, we'll simply use this C bar spec object and initiate it with portfolio spec function. So we have init so this is our portfolio specification object. Now notice that while I'm setting the type of this CVAR spec, I'll use the appropriate CVAR risk so that this CVAR spec is created. Now notice that while solver RGLPK has been set, but we'll use a different variant of this and we'll call this set solver command and we'll pass on the CVAR spec object and specify the solver as sol r glpk dot CVAR. So this specific solver will you assign, we'll use this specific solver. Again, the number of assets, although this we have already done, we will assign the number of assets as n call final return. So we specify that there are six assets. With this, our complete specification is come over. Now you can create number, for example, if you want to set weights or perform other functions, you can exactly do the same commands that you used earlier. So for example, you want to set weights to this CVAR spec object. You can simply assign it with the same command, rep one upon n assets, comma times equal to an asset is the same command so basically we are able to initiate our CVAR spec object now if you want to compute equal weighted portfolio you want to compute tangency portfolio as an example if you want to compute equal weighted portfolio let me show you that equal weighted port equal to feasible portfolio as we did earlier same command we are using and unspecifying data is equal to final underscore return here spec is CVAR spec. Also, you can use those dynamic interactive frontier construction with the feasible region and everything. You can do all that. So here I'm specifying long only. So if I run this, my equal weighted portfolio object, feasible portfolio is created. If I run this, I can print a nicely printed readable summary. Notice this is CVAR object, CVAR portfolio, risk here being CVAR. And you can see the 
weights equal weights since it was equal weighted object we can see the equal weights covariance risk budgets target risk covariance cvar and so on so other procedure and implementation remain identical to what we have already seen for example we can construct tangency portfolio we can construct minimum risk or global minimum risk portfolio we can dynamically and in an interactive manner we can construct frontier plot as well so to summarize in this video we initiated a cvar object which was in contrast to our covariance risk object that we created in the previous series of videos in this lesson so just to summarize we created cvar object the other remaining commands to create frontier plots tailored plot and other things remain identical so in the interest of time we will not repeat them we hope with this lesson and with this r implementation you are now comfortable with constructing portfolio of your own choice with your own securities using r to summarize this lesson mean variance framework relies on portfolio variance or standard deviation as a measure of risk more recently tail risk measures such as conditional value at risk which is cvar have been implemented to examine the extreme risk scenarios we augment our mean variance framework with this cvar measure to construct and visualize mean cvar portfolios we start the discussion with introducing these measures next we implement the portfolio concepts using our programming we start by downloading the data from yahoo finance subsequently we compute the returns and visualize the data we initiate our portfolio object with simple long only constraints then we construct and visualize portfolios with specific risk return objectives these include equal weighted feasible portfolio minimum risk portfolio global minimum variance portfolio tangency portfolio then we plot efficient frontier in an interactive and customized manner we also initiate a short portfolio object with box group and risk budget constraints and visualize various attributes of this portfolio including weights weighted returns and risk budget composition we also combine these constraints and create a complex constraint object we comprehensively examine this portfolio object with complex constraints lastly we also learn how to initiate a portfolio in mean cvar framework